the iPhone 10 grew up this year. We're going to do an extensive hands-on review of the iPhone 10s Max. Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider. After months of rumors and speculation, the 10s Max is here. We're going to break it down, check out what's going on on the inside, do some performance comparisons, and take a look at some of those photos from the new cameras. So first up, here's the phone. It is pretty much the exact same size, maybe a little bit smaller than any of the plus size versions before the iPhone 8 plus 7 plus any of those. But obviously that screen goes full edge to edge. Here it is compared to the iPhone 10s. You can see it's definitely larger. At the same time, it's still keeping that big, beautiful display. This is an HDR 6.5 inch super retina display, 2688 by 1242 pixels, which gives you a PPI of 458. Same as the iPhone XS. It supports the P3 wide color gamut and has a 1 million to 1 typical contrast ratio. All of that is pretty much same with the iPhone X and of course the XS. But what is new this year, we have this brand new color. So aside from the black and the silver, the white, we have gold. Now it's not just your normal yellow gaudy gold, it's kind of more subtle. It's got that kind of off-white back and the gold on the outside is a little bit to the copper, a little bit rose gold. It's not going to really offend anyone. So people who don't usually like that bright yellow gold, they still might be in to this version. It looks really nice on that glossy stainless steel band and even accented around the camera module. Moving from the outside to the inside is the brand new A12 Bionic processor with a brand new 8 coral neural engine. That is paired with 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. Now those specs are identical here on the iPhone XS Max as they are on the iPhone XS. And then we have the iPhone X on the far left. So we're going to run a bunch of different Geekbench tests here with the iPhone X on the left, the XS in the center, and the XS Max on that right hand side. So as Geekbench 4 is finishing up, we've run this test several, several times just so we get kind of an average of what these results actually are. So let's go ahead and take a look first at the iPhone 10. You can see we've run it a few times here and you can see the CPU test is giving us around 4,200 average on the single core and multi-core is coming in around 10,500 ish. The graphics test is giving us a score just around 15,000, just above about 15 and a quarter. If we move on to our iPhone 10s and give those a comparison, on the multi and single core CPU tests, we're getting around 4,800 on that single core and multi-core has spiked to about 11 and a half thousand. Those were pretty good gains, but we got even better gains on the graphics portion. It actually jumped up about 30% to roughly around 20,000. Moving on to the iPhone XS Max, which has the same internals as the iPhone XS, our scores are a little bit lower than we expected, about 4,800 and about 10,500 for the single and multi-core scores respectively. On the graphics portion, we got quite similar results, actually coming in above 21,000, which should be great to see on such a large, beautiful display. Next up, we traveled outdoors to test out those brand new cameras. We still have the dual 12 megapixel camera system, except there are a few improvements that should lead to better low light photos and contrast. The cameras are largely the same, but that top wide angle camera has actually increased the sensor size and pixel pitch has gone from 1.22 micrometers to 1.4. That extra depth should allow more low light to come in. Apple has also paired the camera system with that new really fast neural engine. That should allow for better portrait photography, image segmentation, facial landmarks, and facial recognition. The XS and the XS Max also have this awesome depth control feature where you can adjust the amount of blur by increasing or increasing the F value. As that F value decreases, it is theoretically widening the aperture, allowing more light in and blurring the background more. It gives us some really nice bokeh effects and it even gives you kind of distortion around the edges, the same as you would see with a DSLR. You saw it first with that iPhone pic, now you're here seeing it with an actual portrait mode photo of a person. We know some of this has been done with apps, but they do a really good job here natively. We shot a bunch of other photos, so let's go ahead and take a look at them, some low light, some not, and we'll compare them to the iPhone 10. Starting out with those comparison shots. Taking a close up of a tree, you can see there's definitely a little bit more warmth and contrast on the iPhone 10s Max. Similar shots here, they're a little bit more bright with the XS and the XS Max, but you can see there's more aggressive smoothing when you get into the details of the actual wall. 
This is a 10x shot, and you can see the iPhone XS Max, they're just a little bit more aggressive smoothing around the edges. I slightly prefer the actual iPhone X shot when we actually look at the picture of the tank. Portrait mode photos, they look great and they lock on faster than ever with the iPhone XS Max. And with all of our shots, the shutter lag is almost non-existent. There is a little bit of issues with the portrait mode around kind of more abstract objects. You can see on the top of the tank here, we're kind of blurred the actual spout. Happens with kind of abstract objects as well as with hair around the fringe. Low light photos were pretty solid with very minimal blur and pixelation going on in the dark areas. For close up photography, we found that the focus was quicker than it had been in the past. Overall, we'd say that the photos are definitely better than the iPhone 10, but it's not necessarily enough to warrant the upgrade all on its own. Another new aspect of the iPhone XS and XS Max is improved speakers. There are two sets of speakers on the iPhone XS Max, the bottom and the top. This actual part that you use when talking on the phone is made really loud to use as an actual speakerphone. When watching something like a movie, it was pretty clear that that left side speaker was not up to the task. This year, it should be much more balanced. So let's go ahead and listen to that 3D soundscape and just overall volume when watching a movie such as Independence Day. We'd say not a huge difference in overall quality, but the speakers themselves sound more balanced, which should, as Apple says, create a more robust and filling soundstage. Basically that top speaker, just louder and more clear, there's less crackle when the volume is turned up all the way. Sometimes you may not notice it, other times you certainly will. We also have improved LTE. Their support for gigabit LTE, which has varying use in the US depending on where you live. Additionally, it's the first iPhone to support T-Mobile's 600 megahertz band 71 LTE. To help manage this, you can see there's a couple new antenna bands, one on the bottom, which gives you kind of offset speaker grills, and then another one here at the top. When we actually did some speed test, again, this is going to vary completely based on where you are. We saw pretty solid results. Just running on Verizon here in Columbus, Ohio, we were easily averaging around 60 on the down and nine ish on the upload. Depending on your carrier and where you live, these could be completely different results, but for us, 63 Mbps down and 8.93 up are definitely improvements over our iPhone 10. Of course, the 10s Max supports wireless charging, and it's actually faster than it was in the past, thanks to a new tighter coil on the inside. It doesn't really allow for more wattage on the input, so it'll just take 7.5 watts, but with that new tighter coil, it charges a little bit quicker. It also has better placement when putting it on the mat. You don't have to be as specific and as exact. In our testing, we noticed that it charged faster, but not significantly so. The one thing that we really have to knock Apple on is the inclusion of this thing, this five watt wall adapter. It is one, not USB-C, and two, it's still only five watts. The iPhone XS Max has the largest battery ever in an iPhone, and yet we're still stuck with this dinky slow charger. This is unacceptable. We don't need to switch to USB-C necessarily on the iPhone itself, but the cord should be a USB-C lightning cable and we need to have a faster wall adapter. This year, the iPhone XS Max and the iPhone XS have feature parity. There's no big features that you get by going with the larger iPhone other than the larger screen. So when it comes down to choosing which model to get, that's really up to you. Those glossy signs and the heavier weight make this a little bit easier to hold in the hand than previous plus size handsets. But if you don't need that large display, you can go with the iPhone XS and get just as an amazing phone. As it is every year, this is the best phone that Apple has ever made. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.